Hey, church family. I hope you're doing well today. My name is Daniel McClendon. I'm the worship and media pastor here at First Baptist Church. And I want to welcome you to another episode of our weekly podcast. Today I'm flying solo because it's a short week, so everybody's super busy trying to get ready for Wednesday night stuff. And speaking of Wednesday night, we do have a big announcement that I want to remind you of. This Wednesday night, we have our midweek for adult classes starting, okay? We've already been doing FSM, student ministry stuff runs year-round. Kids Trek has been off for the summer, but started a few weeks ago. And now we have our adult classes starting tonight, Wednesday night. So we'd love for y'all to come and join us. There are several different classes you can check out. You can look at them on the Church Center app. There's a list of all the classes coming up. There are some gender-specific classes, and then there are some classes for different age groups. But we'd love for y'all to get involved. Find a smaller group. There's something special when we get around a small group of people that we can really get to know. They can get to know us, and we can live this life together. We're not living just on our own on an island and then just showing up to church once a week. But the church is a community of believers living life together in the name of Jesus for the mission of God. So don't forget tonight, Wednesday night, we will have our adult midweek classes starting six o'clock. Now, Sunday, Brett made it through just a few verses started in Romans 12, verse 9, made it through verse 13. There are many things you can talk about in these few verses, which is why I don't think you made it very far on Sunday. But just to begin with, it says, verse 9, love must be sincere. Certainly a high call there for us to be sincere and truthful, especially in this day and age when we are constantly pushed to present to the world a facade, a mask of who we really are with social media and all manner of things online. So let's jump into this first clip from Sunday where he's talking about this subject. Basically, he's like, love and love genuinely. Don't pretend to love others. We've all been in churches before where there's a lot of pretend love. (laughs) A lot of people that smile and and hug and all that. But D.L. Moody once said, there are a lot of people who talk cream but live with skim milk. We can't, we can't fake this. You either live it in the power of Christ or you don't. But it is in the power of Christ that we can love. I like how Brett brings it back to it's in the power of Christ that we can love others and truly love sincerely. On our own, I think we're all very selfish, right? On my own, I have a natural proclivity to selfishness, to doing whatever I want to do all the time. And it's only when I submit my life to Christ and follow his example, that I can get out of my own way and let Christ lead. And I love how it says love must be sincere. It's not like try to be sincere when you can. It's, it says this is, this is just who you must be now in this new reality of us being followers of Jesus. We must be like Jesus. This means we must be true. It reminds me of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 6, you know, Jesus is talking about giving to the needy. And he says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you have no reward from the Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with a trumpet like the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Uh, I've heard it put in, in those verses. Uh, another way where it said, do not do your good deeds with an eye on the audience, where you do something good and then you kind of have one eye looking out the side, making sure someone's looking, and then you give to the needy. 
and making sure somebody can see you do this good deed. It's really easy to do that. It's really easy to be hypocritical. It's really easy to do our good deeds so that other people will applaud us. But when we do that, are we truly loving others? Or are we just using others for our own applause? Here, Paul is saying, love must be sincere. And that sincere love comes from the transformed life. Our lives surrender to God for His use. When we're being used for Him, we're not looking out the side of our eyes, seeing if someone's going to applaud our good deeds, because the one we're looking to for applause is our Father in heaven. Love must be sincere. Then it says, Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. In the sermon, I won't play the clip, but this word cling, he kind of gave this illustration of glue. So if you've ever gotten just regular glue on your hands, like as a, as a child, it just kind of sticks to your hands, but you can kind of peel it off when it dries. No big deal. But if you've ever gotten super glue, he went into talking about that. That is serious matter. That stuff will not come off. You've got to, and that's kind of the image you use this. It's almost like cementing your fingers together. You know, if you get that super glue on them, it says that's the kind of idea of cling to what is good. Cement yourself to what is good is a great, great point from the sermon. Too often, maybe today, we, we, we invite evil things into our lives and say, oh, well, you know, is it really that bad? I don't know. And then we make concessions for it. And then the next time something similar comes around, well, we've already made a concession for that. So it's a lot easier to say, it's not any different than that. Well, I'll just, okay, I'll allow that in my life too. And suddenly we've gone down this road where we are no longer hating evil, but we've welcomed it into our home. Instead, we must hate it and cling to what is good. Continuing, I'm just going to read the next couple verses. There's a lot that Brett had to say about them, and they were really good, so go back and listen. But verse 10 says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Let's listen to a clip from Sunday where Brett's talking about this verse. Verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal. Zeal is not a word we use a whole lot anymore. But this says, don't, don't have a lack of ambition for the things that are worthwhile. Don't be blasé or passive about following Jesus, seeing the kingdom on this earth, helping others. Like We shouldn't be indifferent to the things of God. We should be excited about those things. We should have ambition to see those things. And tied into that, he says, keep your spiritual fervor. That's the passion and excitement. The word here for fervor literally describes like boiling hot liquid. So he says, don't be lukewarm about your passion for God. Instead, be boiling about the things that are good. In that, serving the Lord. I love that. He said, don't be lukewarm in your passion for serving the Lord, but be boiling over. I love this image that we're getting here of this person who's sincerely loving others, who hates what's evil, who clings to what's good, who's devoted to one another in the church, who's passionate. They're not lacking zeal. They're boiling over. They're not lukewarm. You know, sometimes I think, you know, this idea, this person, we might think, oh, that's the excited youth minister at the church, (laughs) okay? That's the young guy, but he's not putting parameters on this. He's not saying, oh, the young people be zealous, you know? He's, He's saying this is who we should be as Christians. This is, we should be excited. We should be zealous. We should be boiling over with spiritual fervor for serving the Lord. And remember, Brett said this several times in the sermon, but this is not just us willing all of this to happen, but this is us offering ourselves 
as a living sacrifice and allowing God to transform us into something new. So then we're at verse 12, where it says, be joyful in hope. Let's pick up a clip from Sunday Sermon. So I am joyful in my future hope, which is that I will be reunited with Christ and I will spend eternity with him in heaven. And yes, it hasn't happened yet, but my belief is a certainty of hope. And that brings joy, which, as we've talked about many times, is not happiness. Happiness is temporary. It's just keeping our eyes fixed on hope. I can be joyful knowing that I know the end of the story. I think that's super important thing for me to remember myself is just to always remember we know the end of the story. We know that God's going to make all things right. And right now there's a lot wrong, but we know that God is going to come and set all things back to rights. And that does give me a joy in the midst of the hard time. I like how Brett said, keep your eyes fixed on hope. That's something I definitely need to to learn to do better on those difficult days especially. And then the last verse says, share with the Lord's people who are in need and practice hospitality. There's a lot to go on in these few verses, and a lot of it, to be honest, I don't feel that great at. Uh, I see many of these areas where I could say, I could be much better, and I need to be much better. And I know it's not, as Brett said, it's not about just trying harder and willing it, but it's about submitting ourselves to the Lord and being transformed by Him. I think Brett made a good point at the end of his sermon where he said, there's a lot of things here. It may be hard for you to do all of these things, you know, every single day and to keep all of these things on the forefront of your mind. So maybe just take one thing a day, take one of these ideas a day and try to apply it to your life. These, What value do these have if we can't apply them to our lives? That's really why we do this podcast, is to help just remind us again, how can we apply these things? How can we be more sincere? I need to look to the Lord. Lord, let your truth, let your sincerity roll in and through me. Move in and through me. I need to hate what's evil. You know, take one, one of these things and just meditate on it, pray on it. Let it form you. Let God shape you that we could become the people that God wants us to be. Let me end us out by praying for us. Father God, Lord, I pray that you would just transform us individually and as a community. Shape us, Lord, by your Spirit. That we would be people who love sincerely who hate evil, who cling to what's good, who are devoted to one another, who honor one another above ourselves, who don't lack zeal, passion, or spiritual fervor, but find joy in serving you, Lord. That we are joyful in the hope that you have given us. We are patient in affliction. We are faithful in prayer. And that we would be people who share with those who are in need. And that we would be hospitable to the stranger, to those who are not part of who we are. Lord, we need you to do this. We are completely inadequate on our own. So would you come and do what you will. Change us, inform us. We submit to you, Lord. We love you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you all for listening to another look this week. I really hope it was encouraging to you. That's my prayer, that this is an encouragement to you, that this helps you in some way apply what we're learning and just dive into it a little more. Um, We're kind of trying some different things with it because I I really don't know exactly what works best. So just being honest, I've never done anything like this. We're just kind of trying some things. But 
Um, hope it's been encouraging to you. Remember, classes start Wednesday night, tonight, uh, 6 o'clock for adults. We've got uh, a Bethlehem meeting Sunday right after church, if you're interested in that, as well as a worship night this Sunday at 6 p.m. We hope you are there. Y'all have a great week.